Hi guys, this is Kimmy Yangs and welcome to the unboxing and setup video for the Iron Racing TV stand cockpit. As most of you know, this is my um, racing cockpit from Iron Racing and I was actually using a swivel bracket to turn this 43 inch TV around whenever I needed to do any sim racing on my PS4. However, it's a big unit and it's quite a cumbersome process to get the exact angle after you swivel the TV around and um, you have to move this one as well just a little bit so that you know you get a good uh, good viewing angle. So I spoke to the guys at the Iron Racing Center in Bangalore and this is what they suggested. A TV racing stand obviously brings the the screen a lot closer reduces the extent of hassle that I might go through when playing and it's quite a small unit to have once again as you can see made in India the, the team is based out of Bangalore um, the cost for this accessory is 6750 rupees and they shipped it out by land uh, took up took me took about a week to make it down to me so without further much to say let's go ahead with the unboxing video for this and i will be showing you what all the package holds and how are we going to set and, and the way we are supposed to set this up so see you guys in a bit right so i have opened this box and these are the contents as you can see we've got a a couple of the base stands and uh, bolts in you know all wrapped up and sealed pretty well and we've got uh, a plate right at the back uh, the plate will house your console or um, any other device that you would be playing on so uh, let me get these things out and uh, and I'll get back to you guys shortly right so these are the contents of the box unwrapped and right in front of you uh, I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of what the box contained this was obviously the base, fl base plate for housing your console or any other device that you would be playing your uh, games on I don't need that as of now so it will be wrapped and locked away in a secure place top notch quality heavy duty carbon steel construction we've got M8 nuts on either side that's the TV fixing frame this is the base of the racing stand itself uh, uh, the TV stand itself apologies so this is the base for the TV stand we've got uh, the main ribs for <coughs> for the, the the stand so this basically is the inner rib um, that will be used for mod you know adjusting the length that the TV should be on the height and this obviously is the holder frame for your TV uh, before I proceed um, I just wanted to tell you guys that the TV racing stand can house screens up to 55 inches but the boys at Iron Racing recommend that uh, a 32 inch screen should be good. I would actually be using a 22 inch TV for now. It's a pretty old unit so I'm just going to run it down and then switch over to something new. So yeah this was the unboxing uh, section of the video. Everything's been unboxed, unwrapped and laid bare now on the floor. And uh, the next portion of the video will now be for the setup. Part 1 of setup video would obviously be to start with the base. The base of the, of the racing stand, of the TV stand. And um, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> And we are going to have these two base units come on either side of the racing cockpit. And then we move upwards. So we work our way up from the base. Like any proper construction. So yeah. So the next portion of the video would be the setup video. And uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Right. So welcome to the setup uh, portion of this video as I said we'll start with the base first and the first step that we need to do with this base is 
remove these two screws from from here obviously you have to remove the washer here as well so once you do that then uh, you know that opens up the slot for putting in your tv pillar ribs which are these it's a pretty long thing um, but this is going to be part one of the video so the first thing that we have to do is get both the base frames these two frames here remove these screws along with their bolts and the washer and then move on from there so i'll see you guys in part two of the video once i've removed these two things off and i actually have put in this pillar into the base so see you guys in a bit right so guys um got my hands a bit greasy now i feel like a grease monkey so uh yeah this is part two of the setup video so as you can see i've i've actually used uh, the allen key to undo these screws along with the washers from the two slots that we had here the next step as i said was to put in these tv pillar ribs into uh, the base frame here now one important thing to note is that the longer length of the base frame has to be towards your seat and the shorter one towards the pedals so this is how you need to place them on either side of the racing cockpit here also the other thing to note is that these two grooves that you see here have to be on the inside of the base frame so be mindful of the fact be mindful of this when uh, you would be mounting this pillar rib onto your base frame the next step now obviously with these pillar ribs is obviously um, that these aren't stable yet because they aren't screwed in so now i'll be screwing these back into their slots so we've got this fixed and then the next part would be to unscrew this bolt as well as this one so that these can extend to the height that i would desire for my screen obviously if you have a bigger unit then you would need to go to a higher to a greater height than that if you were using a smaller screen so this was part two of the video uh, as i said in part three uh, you'll be seeing the, the bolts screwed in along with the tv rib and you will see the extension of these two arms on either side of the racing cockpit so first i'm actually going to be just setting it up independently and then once when the setup is done um, i will be moving it to i will be moving this stand to the other end of my cockpit so i'll see you guys again for part three of the video welcome to part three of the setup video and as you can see the the tv rib has now been hard fixed into the base frame I put it in the slot and ensured that it's tightened with the screw and the washer. So both sides of the base frame have now been hard fixed. Also um, the screws that we, we saw earlier have been taken out from the along with its washer and we have pulled up the extension arm for this TV rib. One thing that you need to obviously keep keep a note of is the number of holes that this extension arm is passing through you don't want the extension arm to come out completely because putting it back in can be a tedious process so i've actually kept it on the final hole that is there on either arm so this is at its maximum height right now so if i were to just step away a bit this is how high the arm can extend so the arm has been extended i will be screwing this bolt along with its washer back in on either side and then the next part would obviously be working with the m8 nuts and the the tv fixing frame there so 
this was part three of the setup video and i will be going on to part four shortly right this is part four of the setup video and i think this is one of the most important sections so i request a complete attention for this portion so as you can see i've moved the base into their respective slots on either side of the racing cockpit and uh, i've screwed this in as well along with its washer so my extension arm is now fixed you can see it on either side as i said earlier the important point is that these two grooves have to be on the inside face of the frames so because these will actually house this plate i will show you guys how to do it later but uh, for now this is where i need your attention so once you've done this you have to be mindful of the fact that these m8 nuts are responsible for the angle adjustment for your tv or your screen with whatever you put up for racing here so as you can see we've got on either side we've got we've got these three holes and then we've got a single hole and then we've got three holes here and a single hole here as well now what is important is that the placement of this m8 nut so if you see this bracket these two holes have to be jutting outwards on either end so so this is how you're supposed to orient your m8 brackets point number two the single hole has to be on the lower face on either side and the three holes that you see on top are actually responsible for your angle adjustment so i'll show it to you on this side because the, the curtain is actually getting in the way so if i was actually so if you can see i've actually aligned it with the the center hole right now the center groove but if i were to move it this way now it's aligned with the with the first groove and then if i move it this way then i actually need to push it up a bit because i've actually not hard fixed it so just right so as you can see this is how the angle adjust changes for the m8 nut so this is very important and once you've got your angle right then you actually use these m8 nuts m8 bolts with their washers and then you push them into these grooves and you would have this hard fixed so i'll actually show you how it looks after screwing it in and then we can move on to the next section of the video so bear with me for a while right so as you can see i have actually bolted these in with their respective washers on either side so i just need to tighten them with the allen key and then they'll be hard fixed so this basically is for determining the angle of your tv screen so if i were to sit right now and show you you can see this is how it would be looking so obviously the there's no tv screen right now so i need to get that thing sorted i'll have the um holder frame added in as well so yeah this is basically how your tv screen will be angled at so i would suggest that you know you guys better be careful when you're setting this up because if you get your angle wrong then you need to go back a few steps because after this we'll be having the holder plate coming in and then you actually have a tv mount and the tv frame grid coming in so you'll have to undo all of those things and then you know sort this angle adjustment out you could do it still by uh, releasing these screws and letting the rest of the assembly be but then if you have a big unit then it might be a cumbersome process so yeah this was part 4 of the setup video like i said a quick recap of portion 4 i have moved the base the respective bases you know on the onto the sides of the racing cockpit we put in this m8 bracket <coughs> with these two grooves jutting outwards on either side this hole should be aligned on the right hand side 
and that one on the left you need to have three grooves on the top single groove on the lower face on either end and these three grooves are responsible for your angle adjustment so one more point you don't need to loosen this as of now they can be as they are it was a mistake on my part to loosen them so you can let them be as they are because they would actually be needed at the next step so you would need to loosen this at the next step of the setup so this was part four uh, shortly i'll be returning with part five wherein we'll be looking into the final stages of our setup that's adding the holder plate the tv bracket and then the tv itself onto this mounting area and then i will be showing you guys how to set up the console or the rig plate as well you know whatever whatever you use this mounting for it could be for your cpu or it could be for your ps4 your xbox one or any other device that you would be playing on so see you guys with part five of the setup video this is part five of the setup video and now we have the holder plate being mounted onto the the tv stand ribs so as you can see we've got two holes on either side these two grooves will now align with the two grooves of this holder plate this is how the plate is supposed to be mounted so that these ridges are then used for the tv unit to be mounted with the tv brackets that you see back there uh, i also spoke to the iron racing guys and they have told me actually that it is advisable to have the base plate the to, uh, the rig plate mounted because it also adds a lot of stability to these arms that you see for the tv stand obviously it would because it's a pretty hefty unit so it brings out a proper weight distribution on either side so this is part five of the video pretty straightforward not too much of an issue so i'll i'll have the holder plate mounted and then i'll have the tv brackets come in in the next setup video and um, in, in the next section of the setup video and then in the final section i'll have the base plate mounted and then the tv itself right so i'll see you guys uh, for part six of the setup video right welcome to part six of the setup video and as you can see i have mounted the holder frame onto the tv rig arms and this is the view that i'm going to have from my racing cockpit so obviously if, if you need you know you can always bring this down a little lower by using the height adjust on either side which i am actually going to do because i just think that it's a bit too high uh, and now for the sixth section of the video i am actually going to be using the base plate for the gaming console that they have given us as you can see you've got two grooves on either side here that's groove two and then you're supposed to mount it it's pretty heavy so bear with me for a minute and then you're supposed to mount it up like this so i'm actually going to be doing this next and uh, and yeah i'll see you in the next section of the video shortly right this is part seven of the setup video and uh, this is my 10 year old tv that i'm going to be using for now uh, for racing on the cockpit and as you can see these are old screws um, this was obviously 10 years old so these are not vesa mounts as such i have removed the original mount the wall mount that was there so, so this has been taken out and these are the screws that have come off it so obviously if you see the um, the tv frame arms the holes are too big for these screws as you can see these go through and through so i actually went down to the hardware store and got myself a few washers 
um, thick enough so that uh, I can actually have double washers, one on the TV uh, back base itself and then the other on the frame itself. So, so then, you know, we'll have these four screws um, back into their slots onto the back of the TV and we'll have these frames aligned with them so aligned with the hole so if you go to see here we've got two of these so all I have to do is basically align this hole and this hole so I've got these two holes that I need to align and I'm going to use both the frame arms to do that and once I'm done uh, we're going to lift the entire unit up and place it on the back plate the horizontal plate I still think we are a bit high so I might have to bring the flexible arm lower than where it is right now so yeah that will happen in part 8 but uh, this is part 7 of the video and I've had a quite quite a long day so let me just finish this ASAP and then show you how this thing would look on the TV stand right guys the setup is now complete and let me just quickly run you through the final steps of the setup like I said in the previous video I had gotten myself two washers for each screw to basically hold these tiny screws into the slots with the TV bracket um, you can see that the TV bracket is holding on to the, to the screen pretty well once that was done I lifted the bracket as well as the TV and I've mounted it on to the base plate of the racing stand uh, I don't know if, if it's visible it's it's a bit too dark right now so but there are grooves actually uh, with these TV brackets so all you have to do is slot in slot these grooves into the base plate uh, base plate extrusion once that is in it holds your TV stand pretty well and then after that we've got these two screws on the underside which you need to tighten once that is done your TV is firmly placed if you were to ask me how it looks from the seat let me just get into the seat quickly and show you how it looks so this is how the screen looks I've actually pushed the screen slightly away from me um, just to show you guys the the view basically so the top of the wheel is supposed to be in line with the the base of the bezel that you see there mine isn't but once obviously I move it closer to me it will align to some extent I don't want to move it further down because then the steering wheel acts as an obstruction to what is whatever is shown on the bottom of the screen so yeah this is the setup done uh, as you can see the base plate is there at the back as well it still is a very compact setup because the TV stand can be restricted within the conf within the expanse of the racing cockpit itself base plate included so if, if you have a really small space to work with uh, this can house a lot of your stuff in console consoles controllers your gaming headsets a few CDs and other knickknacks as well so so yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, oh before I sign off and before I forget you can see the base plate is jutting out on either side that's absolutely normal because this is only a 22 inch screen as I said earlier this can house up to 55 inch TV screens so so the base plate is capable of holding on to a fair amount of weight right I hope you guys have enjoyed this video this was the unboxing the unwrapping and setup video for the iron racing tv stand accessory for the iron racing esports home racing cockpit please like comment share subscribe i hope uh, 
I have kept it informative and detailed enough for all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Stay racing. Have a great weekend. This is Kimmy Yangs signing off.